Let's write down all of our Christoffel symbols. We calculated them all to be Txx. Gamma of Txx is equal to Pt to the 2p minus 1. Gamma of Ty y is q t to the 2q minus 1. Gamma of t z z is equal to r t to the 2r minus 1 for our first family. The second family, simpler one, indexed by following. We have gamma of x t x is equal to p over t. Gamma of y t y equal to q over t. Gamma of z t z is equal to r over t. So just calculating the, Christo the Christoffel symbols was difficult enough. But wait, there's more. Now comes the real fun part. Now, I'm going to write the definition of the Riki tensor. And you tell me what you think about it in the comments. It's pretty interesting. So we have the Riki tensor. Its definition is R mu nu, so it's just a matrix, right? R mu nu, only two indices, can't be that bad, right? Well, since it's made out of the Christoffel symbols, we have to add more indices to sum them over. Its definition is as follows. Derivative with respect to sigma of gamma sigma mu nu plus gamma sigma, a new summation index, kappa sigma, gamma kappa mu nu, minus d nu, gamma sigma mu sigma, plus gamma sigma kappa mu, no, this is new. Every one of these has to be right. Gamma kappa nu, Gamma, kappa, mu, sigma. Now, what is the point of this thing? Well, the point of this thing is to write down all the combinations that you can have something like D Christoffel symbol here, but you have all the indices cancel so that only mu nu made the bottom. So these cancel, mu nu, we got sigma's canceling, kappa's canceling, mu nu. And there is the same thing with mu interchanged with nu or something like that. I don't know. Then we have the sigmas canceling mu nu. And then we have the sigmas canceling, kappas canceling mu nu again. It's very important to make sure I got this right. But the cancellation is a good check to make sure that you do have it right. Now this is exactly the kind of calculation that people do not want to go on to GR for. I mean, look at this ridiculous crap here. This is insane. Well... Not as bad as the Riemann tensor itself, which has four indices. This is actually a contraction by setting two of the indices equal to each other and then, and then summing. So it could be worse. This is actually the easy way to do the problem. All right, so here's how it works. You basically know from experience or because I'm telling you that it has to be diagonal. So there's only four things to calculate. There's, there's just, um, RTT, RXX, RYY, and RZZ. You just know from experience that, that it has to be diagonal. So you calculate these bad boys and you set them equal to zero. And, and that's what, what we're going to do, what we're going to do now. Let us proceed. First non-zero entry, RTT is, so we have mu and nu both being equal to T. T sigma gamma sigma t t plus gamma sigma kappa summation indices sigma kappa t t minus d t gamma sigma t sigma plus gamma sigma kappa t kappa t sigma. All right, so now we just see which terms are non-zero and so forth. Okay, 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 so TT, this term here is obviously zero because if you look at our list here, none of, none of the non-zero Christoffel symbols have TT in it. This one's obviously zero. 
Same thing with this one. Nothing has TT in the bottom. So we can go to this term here. And this term, well, if we look at something of this form, something and then a T at the bottom, we see that it has to be of this family here. And there are three non-zero values. So we're going to write this for you as follows. So we're going to be considering dt of the first one, x, t, x, first of all. And this is going to be the derivative of p over t, which is nothing but minus p over t squared, which tells us that when we sum them up, we're just going to add up the same thing with p being replaced by q and r. So let's just minus p plus q plus r over t squared. That one really wasn't that bad. Second non-zero term. I'm just gonna have to straight up evaluate it. Gamma, sigma kappa t. Ha, huh. it's a kappa t. <laughs> have you had one this morning? I've had a few. Kappa t sigma. All right, how are we gonna do this bad boy? Well, we are going to notice that we are going to be looking at same ones. Yes, the same ones. We have a t at the bottom here. And the logic is, let's start with this one, for example. Logic. We know that sigma and kappa must be equal to x, y, and z, no t. And sigma has to actually be equal to kappa for this to, to be non-zero. So what we're saying is we want to look at the squares, sigma is equal to kappa, squares of these bad boys here that, that we were just considering. Yes, this logic is a, a, a bit subtle, so it's important to go through it for yourself if you, if you have any questions. Okay, so this is actually equal to the sum as i ranges from x, y, and z of gamma of i, t, i, squared, which we have up there, basically, as just p squared plus q squared plus r squared over t squared. So now we can combine these two. We now have the fact that our original expression is just equal to minus this common factor of 1 over t squared minus this, so we get p plus q plus r, and we get uh, minus this. So p squared minus q squared minus r squared, correct? Correct. So you can see how we already have a part of the answer. If we want this component of the tensor to be zero, then these two things have to be equal, which tells us that the sums of the numbers have to be equal to the sum of the squares. So we'll celebrate later once we have more. Let's go ahead and work on the next one for now. Okay, keep definition of our tensor on the board there. It's a very important, big definition. Incidentally, I'm sorry about the length of this video. I know that most of you aren't gonna watch the video, but thanks so much for sticking with me so far. You feel free to skip ahead, fast forward. You can put me on like five times speed if you want. I just think it's, um, it's important for everyone to see that GR is really not as bad as people make it out to be. You can do it. You don't have to be superhuman. I'm not. I can do it. So can you. That's the whole idea. Okay. Let's look at our next non-zero term, which is RXX. Okay. So we have mu and nu both being equal to x. Sigma is our summation variable. XX plus sigma, kappa sigma, kappa xx, minus dx, sigma x sigma, plus sigma kappa x, kappa x sigma. X derivative, zero, bad x derivative. You don't do anything. We don't need you. Get out of here. All right, so now, I'm going to start computing this bad boy. If we have x's on the bottom here, 
Well, there's only really one non-zero term. D, sigma, sigma x, x. Only one thing has two x's, which is this one. So, and the index is t, dt, t, x, x, which is time derivative of p, t to the 2, p minus 1. p comes outside, p, 2, p minus 1, t to the 2, p minus 2, which we're actually going to write for the, for the remainder of the video as t to the 2, p minus 1, because honestly, it just looks better. And yep, this is our, our first part. This is our first part, making sure it's right. P to be this one, yep. Great. First part is this one. Is, is anything else going to be zero just to make our lives easier? No, unfortunately, it's not going to be zero. We have to calculate more of these stupid things. Okay, so we have gamma of sigma kappa sigma. I'm doing this one now. Kappa xx, right? Sigma kappa x, sigma kappa xx. Okay, this is going to be non-zero for actually kappa equal to t and sigma ranging over x, y, and z. Why is this? Well, I'm looking at this one here. There's only one component, again, which has two x's, which is this one. So we can actually factor this one out so it becomes gamma tx x times the summation as i ranges from x, y, and z of gamma i t i, which we can do pretty easily. Looks kind of scary, even in my notes, but you can certainly do it. Okay, t x x. Well, we have p t to the 2 p minus 1 times the i t i's, summation of the i t i's. Well, looking at an i t i, it's just a common factor of 1 over t. And then you have p plus q plus r. So it's really not that scary at all. Which is now equal to... Don't really have enough room. Which is now equal to... Okay, we get the 2p minus 2 again. p, p plus q plus r t to the 2, p minus 1. Is this right? Is this right? P, people, come on. Yep, it's right. We have one more of these stupid square of Christoffel symbols to calculate. We have to calculate this one. Gamma of sigma kappa x. Kappa x sigma. Logic here is that we have two non-zero symbols here. We have sigma equals t and kappa equals x, or we have sigma equals x, kappa equals t. And because this expression is symmetric, there's a factor of two times gamma t x x, gamma x t x. This is incidentally the part where I messed up the first time I did this. I thought one of these terms was zero, so I didn't get the appropriate cancellation, which you'll see in a bit. It's important to have this. It's really important. Okay. Upon doing this, okay, TXX, XTX. 2 TXX, P, T to the 2, P minus 1, XTX, just P over T, which simplifies to 2, P squared, T to the 2, P minus 1. And now we have all the components that we need to add them all together and to get our Christoffel symbol. And I'm running out of room, of course. What do you expect? All right. It is now simply equal to... I'm looking at this line, of course. First thing I calculated, there's going to be a common factor of 2 to the p minus 1. I know that for sure. I have to add p to the 2p minus 1. I also need to add p, p plus q plus r, and I also need to subtract, yes, I need to subtract a 2p squared. You see that this cancels with this, and our final answer is just p 
times P plus Q plus R minus one, T to the two P minus one. Pretty sure. Yes, it is, it is the answer. And now we can calculate the other spatial components similarly. I'm going to write them all for you now. And this is all the information needed to set this equal to zero and solve for the conditions on P, Q, and R. But we can see from this one already that P plus Q plus R has to be equal to one for this to be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and write everything that we have so far. All right. Okay, 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 done calculating. Now we get to look at our surprisingly simple Ricci tensor components and just talk about it for a bit, which is pretty cool. Okay, lots of chalk, lots of chalk to get rid of today, guys. Want to be able to see everything, of course. It's pretty bad, but you can see it. Okay, so let's celebrate and write down all of our Ricci tensor elements. So we had our TT as, what did we have our TT as? One over T squared P plus Q plus R minus P squared minus Q squared minus R squared. We had our XX as, I should really remember this by now. I know I can remember this, I'm just so disorganized. S, P, P plus Q plus R minus one times T to the two P minus one. And I didn't improve this, but similarly, it's exactly the same way. It's, I'm not cheating you by not showing it. It's just the same thing with the, uh, with the other family of Christoffel symbols. Instead of gamma X, T, X, we'll be talking about gamma of Y, T, Y, which is exactly the same thing with P being replaced by Q. So you're not missing out anything by not seeing me calculate this. Our YY is equal to Q times P plus Q plus R minus one, T to the two Q minus one, and RZZ is equal to R, P plus Q plus R minus one, T to the two R minus one. Okay. We are going to assume that these are the only non-zero Riki tensor components, which you could prove, or you, could, or you could just take my word for it. So our analysis is that R mu nu is equal to zero for one equaling P plus Q plus R is equal to P squared plus Q squared plus R squared since we need these two to be equal to each other in order for it to be zero. So the sums of the integers have to be equal to the sum of the squares of the integers. And for the rest of these to be zero, we need the sum of the integers to be equal to one. So one is equal to this, is equal to this. And we're good. So this is all we wanted to show here. We have successfully investigated this for the Kastner universe. And we would say that the Kastner universe satisfies the Einstein field equations in a vacuum. Which is all R mu nu being equal to zero is. You can show pretty easily in every GR book ever that if you have no matter or energy that you're always gonna have the geometry being equal to zero, which you can and solve for the metric. Instead, we just plugged in a metric as a guess, found these conditions on P, Q, and R. And thanks so much for sticking with me if you did. If you did not, I'll make a shorter one sometime in the future, but I'll try since GR is pretty, compli pretty, com pretty complicated. But if you wanna see more, please say so in the comments and like, subscribe, tell your friends. Have a great day.